Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome back to the Underground Broadcast. Uh, let me make sure my mic is on. Yes, it is. Cheers, y'all. Happy Friday. Cheers, Go Merch. Here's Super Saint Joku. Let me hit it for these assholes who are here early. Let me hit it for Joku. I want to have the world, the world's most comfortable pair of ultra soft. Uh -huh. <laughs> Damn, your intro's loud on my fucking headphones. <laughs> Let me hit it for Gomer Kyle, who's here as well. What's your name, scumbag? Gomer Pyle. Private Pyle, I'm going to give you three seconds to wipe that stupid-looking grin off your face, or I will gouge out your eyeballs and skull fuck you. One, two, three. Shazam. Cheers, Gomer. Cheers, Super Saiyan Joku. This is for you motherfuckers. Happy Friday. Oh, uh, yeah, starting off good. You know what it is? Let me chug this beer for you. Brent, you went. Cheers. All right. Uh, public service announcement, of course, we do have at the moment three broadcasting channels because we currently got banned on the on, on our regular main channel and shit. So we do have the emergency broadcast channel, which we are currently broadcasting from. Uh, and uh, we do also have the uh, illegal broadcasting channel, which we usually show pay-per-views there. Uh, we saw WrestleMania. We saw AEW uh, Revolution and AEW Dynamite. No, not Dynamite, Dynasty uh, last weekend. I really wanted to watch Backlash tomorrow, but it's in France and they're doing it in French time. And so it's like 10 a.m. or 11 or some shit like that. I'm going to be working, so I'm not going to be able to watch that ass. No, like it matter. Nobody's the championships. They're not. Nobody's going to transition to championships there. Cody's still going to be champion. It's one of those pay-per-views that doesn't even matter. Doesn't even matter. That's why they go to another country and they do it during the middle of the day. Because Americans don't give a shit about it. I thought it was this Saturday, Gomer. Oh, well, if it's next Saturday, then, uh, fuck. I don't know. No, I'm going to have to work next Saturday for sure. Uh, Because uh, I'm doing some shit this week. Uh, but anyways, going out of town and shit. But anyways, yeah, we got three channels. Look for them. Blah, blah, blah. Subscribe, like, all that ass. Whatever the fuck. Uh, I do have an action, action pack show for you tonight. We are going to review the Rebel Moon, Moon the Scar Giver. Give you my two cents on that ass. We got some X-Men 97. Going to go over that ass. As well as the Deadpool Wolverine and all the spoilers and shit that came out. And of course, Celebrity Ass for the week. You know what that's like. So get ready for tonight. Uh, but let's get started with the motherfucking comments. Here are our social medias at Cinnaman665 for Twitter. Uh, at the underground broadcast uh, underscore it's in the middle of that shit for the Instagram. And at the underground broadcast for fucking whatever the fuck that other uh TikTok is. Sorry about that. But I will say one thing, we're still, I guess, shadow banned. Either that or maybe the Chinese are doing this on purpose because we're they're about to cancel Twitter. I mean TikTok on America. So I don't know. We might even get rid of the TikTok shit. We don't we don't like communism in this in this channel. Shit. Nobody even watches us anyways. Uh so we'll see what happens with that. Whatever you send me to the social media with given time. I'll go ahead and put it on the show on Friday. Uh Super Saiyan Joku sent me this earlier today. It says uh at the underground broadcast. 
This is how you start the day with milky cereal. Cause son of man, I think this is your favorite flavor, Fruit Loops. Oh yeah, just follow your nose. Oh yeah. So like, were, are they gummies? Fruit Loop gummies? Or are they like Fruit Loops, like cereal? That's just uh, my question for you, Joku. It's a, it's Papa Chino's favorite meow. Oh, is that Papa Chino? Is that your dad? That's fucking badass. He looks like he looks like he could be a wrestler and shit. Oh, uh, hashtag. Live. Hashtag THC. Hashtag pretty booty holes. Edibles chronic. Chocolate mushroom candy bar and some marijuana pills. Uh, so it says Alba, Alba's Dumberdorf. <laughs> it's like Harry Potter. They sell that shit. Those are like, what, weed THC pills and shit? Oh, man. I'm just not into the edibles. And this is what I like. Gummies, they taste like Fruit Loops. That's fucking nuts. That weed looks like the bomb, bro. Man, if I didn't enjoy, if I wasn't a lizard, and enjoyed the hot sun so much and hate it winter. I'd probably be over there right now, Joku, living with you over there, fucking uh, smoking it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. You lucky SOB. That's badass. I wish it was legal over here and shit. Anyways, we got a lot of comments all of a sudden, so let's get started with the motherfucking, uh, with the comments and shit. And our first comment comes from our resident Canuck, who's currently working and shit. Uh, be safe out there. Let me hit it for Indie Phantom, motherfucker. Uh, Indie Phantom says, Ah, on the James Gunn uh, DC mess. Ah, yeah. Mr. Mix Pick, or whatever, is one of the best classic characters from DC. I learned how to say his name from the Superman 3 commentary. What? He was actually going to be in that film at one point. What? In Superman 3? That's the one where he fights fucking Nuclear Man. If they go for some of this true weirdness, this shit is going to rip. Fuck yeah. Also, love Plastic Man from the old cartoons. I like Plastic Man a lot. I had a board. Actually, I like it because in the comic books, Plastic Man is the one hero that actually Superman is afraid of. When they did uh, uh, in Justice for All or whatever, in Gods Among Us, uh, that, that's the one hero that Superman didn't want to mess with him. And he was murdering other superheroes. But when it came to Plastic Man, he just left him alone. Because, I mean, all oh, Plastic Man, is, he, he cannot be destroyed, ever. He'll live forever with his molecular structure and shit. And Superman knows that if Plastic Man wanted, he could just wrap Superman up, like like if, like in a blanket or something, with his skin, and possibly fucking suffocate him and shit. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, he says, I had a board game from Mr. Mixplick or whatever in it that I played every Christmas. Fuck you, son. This is a brave and bold new DC. Cheers. This is a James Gunn running DC into the ground. Indeed. Just you wait until this shit comes out and, and ass. Mr. Miss Pig. He's going to put bat munch, but bat, bat minch or munch. That little. It, it's like a it's like a, a gremlin, but he's dressed as Batman because Batman's his favorite superhero. He's like Mr. Miss Pig. He just shows up and shit. And James Gunn wants to put him in a Batman movie, too. The fucking idiot. It's a bunch of ass he's gonna put. I don't know. We'll see what ends up happening. They're gonna be a super dog in the movie too. Crypto. God damn it. Y'all are pissing me off. We're barely starting with a first comment, you motherfuckers. Cheers, Indie Phantom. Uh, I didn't have a plastic man. Uh, my friend had a Stretch Armstrong doll. I remember that shit. Actually, I had it was I didn't have Stretch Armstrong. I had one of the bad guys. Uh, you would put like a. It, it looked like a put like a little pump, 
but it would actually suck the air and you would put it on the back of of this thing and then suck all the air and then you could stretch it and shit and then when you press the button the air would de deflate and then he would go back to normal it's pretty crazy uh i remember that shit i cut him open there was like sand inside i fucked up the toy broke after that oh well anyways let's move on to the next comment thank you indy phantom uh, also on the same video, Anthony Timmons, he says, I'm convinced James Gunn is suffering from brain rot. And uh, this guy, or Han, or, or and man, man, or some shit. Or and man, or on a man. I don't know. He put a, I agree for that, but James Gunn is a heck director. Hashtag fire James Gunn, hashtag boycott D Studios, hashtag boycott WBD. Hashtag restore the Snyderverse. Yeah, I need to get over this. Restore the Snyderverse. That motherfucker's moved on. And, and yeah, it's over. It's over. He's not coming back. All right. And, and Netflix is not going to spend any money on any DC property so that they can allow Jay, the, the fucking Zack Snyder to complete any of his fucking visions. It's done. Go online and read the, uh, the scripts. They're online if you want to know how the fucking story finished. It's shit. Cheers, Timmons. It cheers to you, or man, man, man. Whatever your name is. Cheers. <sighs> oh, Indie Phantom again. On the comments, he says, Ha 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 ha. Holy crap. Subscribers on the channel are going high. Unless I'm blind, it looks like you're heading towards fast towards 600 followers, which is awesome news. I think we're at like 594. I'm not gonna lie. As soon as he who should not be named left the channel, all of a sudden every week we're getting more and more subscribers. It's like he really was racist and was fucking degrading and lowering this channel to lower lower levels than what we were. That son of a bitch. I knew his racism was what's holding us down. But we moved on from that bigotry now. And we're doing better in this channel. And we're close to 600 subscribers. So I encourage each and every one of you at home watching right now. To make three fake YouTube accounts and subscribe to us to help us reach our goal. Oh yeah, cheers! <laughs> he says, uh, he, he continues and he says, Today, it was my birthday, but I have been busier than usual. I'm supposed to get a couple of days off in early May. We'll, sh we'll see. Hell yeah, because I, I, I told him he could stay in Texas if he ever drives over here. Because he drives all over the fucking country. So I've never been to Texas, but it's on my bucket list. I'll definitely hit you up if I end up there someday. I know my dad was there a few times way back in the 80s and 90s, and he said it was wild. Uh, everyone is armed and shit. Well, especially nowadays, or nowadays, for sure, everyone's armed. I want to see some of the woke stuff like Animal Draft House and even the real Alamo. Yeah, the real Alamo is, um, it's going to be disappointing when you finally see it. It's really small. Yeah, it's a lot smaller, you know, than, than, than you're led to believe. He said, cheers, and I will see you soon. Hashtag. Oh, yeah. Cheers, Indy Phantom. Son of a bitch. We love you. Cheers. Man, every time I light this weed, I get that feeling like my nose is running, but it's not. It's not. That's why I keep sniffing. Because I think it's running. Son of a bitch. That's when you know the weed is good. When it fucks up your sinuses. My dad was in Houston a lot for work. Houston is dangerous. Just ask fucking Jose Trevino. He'll let you know, man. It's fucked up. You don't want to go there or Dallas. Those fucking places are fucked. Any city in America is fucked. Any large metropolitan area is fucked. Full of crimes. And brown people committing crimes. White people getting drunk, beating women. It's all over the place. All right, It's America epidemic. It's all over the place. Joe Biden's not doing nothing about it. Obama did nothing about it. That's why we need Trump in the office. Cheers! 
Send us $2,000 in the mail, motherfucker. That's what we want. Stimulus. Give me some of that stimmy. Stimmy money. Give me some of that Ukraine money to my pocket, motherfucker. That's what we want. Anyways, let's move on. Anthony Timmons on the TikTok shadow banned me. He says, I never got into TikTok. Fuck them, son. Well, they're about to get fucked either way uh, because they passed that law or bill. It says that they got to sell TikTok to an American company in order to function in America. And the Chinese are not having it. No, sorry, Bob. They're saying, like, we're going to keep it communism. 100%. My Darth Vader's falling over here on the side. And they want to keep it communism all the way. And uh, they said, we rather shut it down than to bend the knee to a Joe Biden. And it's sounding like, it's sounding like they are going to shut it down, folks. Goodbye to your TikToks and your 14-year-old girls dancing around in tight little shirts, bouncing boobies and shit. Get ready. That shit's going away, sons of bitches. All you're going to have is your exes. And your fucking IGs and your threads and your Facebooks and your OnlyFans. So let's see how you survive with just that. Bitches. Cheers. Timmins continues. He says, another on the Jurassic movie, Jurassic City movie details. Another franchise being run into the ground. I lost my interest a long time ago. Um, like I said, man, I didn't care about the movies as far as the story or where it's going or what's continuation. I just want to see another new dinosaur. A dinosaur I haven't seen in the last movie better come out in a new movie. And then they've delivered when it comes to that. New dinosaurs, more craziness. That's all I care about. And that's all really the American people want to see. Nobody gives a fuck about a uh, tangible multiverse uh, fucking uh, uh, trying to come up with shit. No, fuck you. Give me some dinosaurs eating some people and shit. That's what it's all about. All right. Uh, cheers, Timmons. Cheers. Uh, and plus, Scarlet Yost is going to come out. That's going to be hot as fuck. Uh, I'm trying to drink, but I keep burping right before I drink. God damn it. All right. Let's try one more time. Cheers. Any phantom on the Jurassic Park video as well says, well, I've seen them all and she'll continue to do so, even though they're mostly ass. It's got Scar Joe. Oh, Scar Joe and a couple of woke tarts. They actually should go full R rated and make it about some weirdos that have that get sex kicks from doing it in front of caged dinos. That would be something new. Kornberg could direct. Cheers, sonny boy. Well, Greta Thunberg or whatever the fuck, that lady who did Barbie, she said she wants to do the next. They're not going to give it to her. She did, They said this lesbian's crazy. But she said she wanted to do a movie about uh, someone falling in love with a dinosaur and having sex with it. Yeah. Because apparently, look it up on the internet, there's actually such a thing as women's dinosaur romance novels. Where cave women fall in love with like brontosauruses and then they get fucked by them and shit. It's like actual fucking novels. There's weird shit like that. I'm just like, what are women? That's a fucked up shit, man. You know, they don't want to read. They don't want to see any of the cow porn or the horse porn or the donkey porn. But they're cool with the dinosaur porn because it doesn't exist. So it's not bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know what's in your mind. You want to fuck big fucking giant dicks. Not human dicks. Just wait till the aliens come, you motherfuckers. It's gonna be all cause of debaucheries and shit. Tentacles and shit. That's why that's why the fucking Japanese come up with a fucking hentai and shit. They already know what's coming. It's gonna be bad, fellas. It's gonna be really bad. Cheers, isn't it? Alright, alright. J Hart W on the Jurassic. City movie detail says, oh, oh, he's quoting me because I said about Comen Domingo. They're getting, he, he's rumored to be the villain of the movie. He says uh, that I, I said, you know, he's woke as fuck. 
currently married to another man. So he's perfect for every Hollywood film right now. Cheers! Hey, all I know is that you're an actor, and you're trying out for a movie, when you put sex, it better not be straight. And it better be, say, like, you know, with another man, while another man watches us. There you go. That's the kind of shit they want. They're interested in. Yo, yo, yo. Or a woman who identifies as a man who was actually born as a woman. Or some shit. I don't know. They don't want to get that specific if you don't want. They just want it to be different. They don't want no straight motherfuckers. That's it, man. The age of straightness is over, fellas. Get with the times. Cheers, J Hart W. All right, uh, Anthony Timmons and the Bianca Sensori was assaulted video. Creeps are gonna be creeps. Maybe dude should have stepped in way before the creep even got close. You want a hug, motherfucker? Call your mama. No, but they, the, somebody decked the guy. Somebody decked the motherfucker that put his hands in that bitch's pussy. I don't know if it was Kanye. I don't know if it was the bodyguard. Somebody decked the motherfucker and now somebody's suing somebody. All right, we don't know yet. Nobody knows the details. It's just alleged list and all this ass. But who knows? We're going to find out. Not tonight. Maybe in a week or two. Who knows? TMZ, I'm waiting on you to give us the details. You dicks. Cheers, Timmons. <sighs> There's a lot of comments. You dicks. Uh. Oh. Rocco, fuck my life. Let me hit it for this Satanist. Oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby. Rocco. And Rocco on the El Chapo's unlawful uh, U.S. treatment in jail. Says, Damn, that's Gomer and Joku. And he puts a shocked face. Them some mean motherfuckers. Woke pack got some bad motherfuckers. Cheers! Hashtag. Live. If y'all didn't know, fucking Gomer and <laughs> and Super Say Joku featured that video, that Chapel video. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, I'm just saying, whatever you send me, I'm gonna liberties to post here, motherfuckers. So you, once I know, you can send me a picture of you. You're fucked. <laughs> You're gonna come out one day on the fucking show. <laughs> Cheers to y'all. I hope you all enjoyed that one too. You motherfuckers. I did that for you. Go back. Joku. Cheers. J Hart W. And the son really enjoys reading comments video. He's quoting me again. Son of a bitch. He puts a. Uh, that I said. A transsexual outreach program in the ocean. That's because the guy's comment that I was reading, his his name, his name was Trans Oceanic Outreach Program. No, Trans Oceanic Outreach or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trans Oceanic. So I was just deducing what he what he was. Uh he should be more specific and say what ocean this trans outreach program is at. Is it an Indian Ocean? The the Asian Ocean? Uh the Arctic Ocean? The Atlantic Pacific? I see, I know all of my, my oceans. Sons of bitches. Um be more specific, motherfucker. We'll put more we'll promote your, your your program. Get you more some trans motherfuckers sign up to go over there on boats and shit. You never know. You get more people, we get more subscribers. It goes hand in hand. Yeah, that's how we work. You know what I'm saying? Cheers, J Hart W. <sighs> oh, out of fucking nowhere, Jitsu Miss Prime. <laughs> now. This guy never had an intro because his 
his because he's a he's a woke pack member he he won a year or two ago i don't know when he won he got a shirt did he get a shirt i don't remember we sent it to space we shot it in space x unless that rocket exploded and never made it to space we're sorry <laughs> but anyways uh he's a woke pack member so what we used to do is he who should not be named son of a bitch he was the, the one with the talented voice and he would do Jitsimus Prime's voice and read the comic. But luckily, I don't need that son of a bitch. Because I got AI. So here we go, Jitsimus Prime. We're going to continue the tradition. And we're going to hear you read your own comment here on the fucking podcast. Here we go, fellas. Greetings, Wokus dudes. I'm gone for a microsecond, and all of a sudden, you've been reduced to one. Well, you know how I feel about that. Where we go one, we go all. Do not grieve, son. Fate rarely calls upon us at a moment of our choosing. Just know this. I, Justice Prime, and the Justice Bots have been keeping tabs on you, not missing one show at all. Thank you, son, for entertaining us through these trying times. Through many battles, you and the Woke Pack have kept us sane. Anyways, till next time, my friend. Till all are one. Hashtag. Live. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Suck it. He who should not be named. That was way better than you ever could, motherfucker. Cheers. <laughs> That was badass. That sounded just like fucking Jitsumis right there. Jitsumis, you better let us know next week what you thought about that, you dick. Ah, oh, yeah. Cheers. It's always going to be. Live. I do this for y'all, motherfuckers. Cheers. AI hey, is amazing, y'all. You have no idea what kind of deep fakes you could make and shit. It's badass. I put my face on, on big muscly guys fucking chicks all the time. It's pretty badass. Y'all should try it. It's really awesome. I oh, cheers. <sighs> all right, right. Let's move on. We're getting too out of hand here. Getting too crazy. Super Saiyan Joku and the Beyonce Sensories Assaulted says, I'm going crazy. Explosion. Ah, ooh. Nah, yeah, 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 yeah. They kept it on the download this this week, man. I don't have nothing of no, no titties, no ass from them. We'll see what happens next week with the Yeezy. He must have been he must have been fucking the shit out of her at home instead of parading her around and shit. Yeah, yeah, it happens every once in a while. He has to stay home and actually get to business. Cheers, Joku. Thank you for commenting, son of a bitch. Thank you for being here too. All right. Ah, oh, depots. <laughs> what up, motherfucker? On the sun enjoys reading comments. He puts a peace, peace pot like a do sign, like oh yeah, yeah, motherfucker. I think I read your comment. Was it your comment? I don't remember. If I was reading your comment or not? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Cheers. You put, you put. I read a bunch of your comments, depots. Cheers. <sighs> oh my god. Ugh. All right. Uh, uh. I think I need to start practicing drinking some water because I can't drink that way I used to when I was younger. So now I get to Fridays and all I'm doing is burping. I can't even smoke and drink anymore like I used to. <sighs> Getting old is not fun, fellas. Not fun at all. Anyways, let's keep moving on. We're going to keep on drinking and smoking. We don't give a fuck what our body says. That's right. To the day we die. Oh, shit. Let me make sure this is the last comment. This son of a bitch. I knew he was going to be the last one. Oh, he is the last one. And it's none other than Houston, Texas. Oh, very own Jose Trevino. Repites tu nombre, por favor. Houston, Texas. Eh, soy americano, mexicano, señor. Para que usted se cuadre, ¿ok? Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
tienes envidia, puto. Ah, cheers, Joko. You fucking guy. You're the shit, motherfucker. I love you. Um, on the podcast video, he says, "What up, gay? I mean, Luke Perry, son, simp. LOL. Great show as usual, son. So, what do you think about gay EW? I mean, AEW. I can't stand Jungle Botch." And the young bucks should call themselves young, the young simps. They're so lame. And it, he goes, uh, Kenny Omega is fat like Captain Falcon. Yeah, like Captain America. There's a gay Don who manages the big black dude. AEW is burying their gangster champ. And I thought I saw Nick Ziggler in AEW, but I thought wrong. Anyways, I'm interested in your take. And are there any woke packers on Twitter slash X besides me, Gomer, and you? Well, Indy Phantom's there, but he's been working. Also, did you see Candy Blue on the new Texans jerseys? Cheers to you in the woke pack. H Town full, 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 full live. Uh, Jungle Jack uh, Perry is a good wrestler. I don't, I haven't liked him since he fucked up. With CM Punk. Uh, because he did cost the company. <laughs> CM Punk. That son of a bitch. And uh, the Young Bucks. I mean. God damn it man. I remember when I first saw the Young Bucks. When when Finn Balor brought him into the Bullet Club in New Japan. With Bad Luck, Bad, Bad Luck Fale. Um, back then it was so badass and I was like, damn, these guys are fucking sick. Um, and even when they first kind of split from the, from the fucking bullet club and, and turn into the bullet club slash elite and shit, I thought they were still cool. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah, I, everything fell apart. Everything fell apart. Like even hangman, like I don't, I don't even like hangman anymore and shit. I love Kenny and I respect Kenny, but what it comes down to it is that we've already seen Kenny in his prime when he was in New Japan when he when he fought Okada. Kenny is is this is the end of his career, bro, and and the the the, the illness that he has because it doesn't go away. There's no surgery that he can do. There's nothing he can do. This shit is gonna it'll it'll probably go away. If he's lucky, it'll go away for a year or months. Then it'll come back. If he's unlucky, it's going to come back in a week. It'll come back in a month. It'll come back every couple of days. That shit doesn't go away. Diverticulitis, that's it. You have it for life. Uh, so he's done, man. He might come back for a match if he's lucky. If that week, he doesn't get it. Because it's you don't know when, you, when it's going to come back. Um, And I, to me, he did, like, I... I think he changed his diet, and I think this is, I don't know, I don't know, but because of the change in his body that I saw, I think that he changed his diet. He went from kind of being, you know, just the way Kenny Omega used to look and shit, uh, and then he got thicker and beefier, like noticeably. And I think he wanted to pack on muscle because he was going to be a W. He was going to have the triple. He what he was a uh, what do they call it? When he had four belts, I forgot what they, he was calling it. The triple. It wasn't triple. I don't know. Uh, he had four belts. He had the uh, Impact, the New Japan, the fucking uh, Mexican TV Championship, and then the AEW. So he came out with four belts all the time. So he wanted to look big, and I think he changed his diet to add on muscle to himself. To pack on some muscle. But I think by changing his diet, he started eating stuff that he never ate before. And I imagine stuff like milk and heavier red red meat and shit like that. And that fucked him up. And that's why he also got fat. Because of the diet change. And with the disease too. Uh he's done, bro. He 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 put the he put he has put his body through a lot. We've seen the best of him, man. And there's nothing to be ashamed of. That man uh, was the best wrestler in the world up until a few years ago. 
uh, that's it, man. But he was for a, for a while, a long time, man. At least up until 2020. From, from up until 2020, he was the best wrestler in the world, hands down. Uh, Will Ospreay right now is the best one. Nobody can do what that motherfucker is doing. Uh, and he and if he would have gone to WWE instead of going to AEW, that would have been solidified because the world would have seen him. But right now, only AEW fans are seeing him. So the rest of the general audience, they don't know. They don't even know he exists. But he is the best in the world. Will Ospreay. I give him that. Um, and as far as uh, they're burying their gangster champ. I don't think they're burying him. Uh, he he's there. I mean, whatever. Uh, I thought I saw Nick Ziggler in AEW. I think they left both of them, Ryan Nemeth, and and that other guy. They left and shit. Um, Don Callis, he was cool when he was managing Kenny Omega, <laughs> and he would see those those paintings in the background, the gay paintings and shit. Ah, there was one where it was like he was like that without a shirt with Kenny Omega, and I was like, man, I would do anything to have that up on my wall. That shit looks so badass. You know what? I would do anything to have the Bill Clinton in the blue dress on my wall back there. Oh, I swear to God, that'd be so pimp to have Bill Clinton in a blue dress like this. <laughs> Just like I was Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> Cheers, motherfuckers. Oh my god, that was good. Anyways, I'm pretty sure that's the last comment, Jose Trevino. Let me just uh, double, triple check here. Yeah, that was the last comment. Uh, thank you very much, Trevino, for that comment. I appreciate you, every one of you. Like I said, thank you for commenting. Uh, please send me stuff to your to a social media, and I'll post it here. Uh, or subscribe, or whatever. Or all that ass. I don't know. Whatever. Do whatever you want. That's what America's about. Do whatever the fuck you want don't don't listen to anybody and shit uh but with that being said we're done with the motherfucking comments i thank you all once again uh cheers let me just get another fucking beer here cheers <sighs> all right Let's get into the weekly pop culture breakdown. And this week, God damn it. What kind of world are we living in when a known Known, convicted, rapist gets his conviction overturned. This disgusting, Palestinian hating, fucking, uh, George R. Martin looking son of a bald bitch, rapist, Harvey Weinstein. A judge has overthrown his guilty verdict that was going to send his ass 23 years in prison so he can die in a few months to get him beat up by a bunch of black guys. No. Not going to happen. Not in our timeline. We're in the shitty timeline. All right? In the multiverse, there's a bunch of fucking timelines, badass ones where cool shit's happening. We're in the shitty one right now where Joe Biden is in charge. And Harvey Weinstein's gonna get loose. Why? Because the fucking federal judge has declared that two of the women that testified that he sexually molested and raped them and all this disgusting stuff that they were not part of the lawsuit because it was some other girl saying they raped her. So the judge says, hey, your story has nothing to do with her getting raped. You're talking about your own rape. And that's for another day. So because you were submitted that shit as evidence that has nothing to do with this girl getting raped, your rape has nothing to do with her rape. 
We're turning it over. You believe this shit? How corrupt is the justice system that a man that everybody knows is fucking raping women, throwing his fat, fucking disgusting, leathery, wrinkly, fat, white, cussed, eating, hating body all over these young, aspiring actresses. He tried that shit on Sama Hayek, and she said, I ain't having it, motherfucker. He kicked him in the balls, and they said, you try that again, I'm gonna fucking cut your throat. Take you to Colombia, bitch. They'll never find you again. Oh, he went on the trip. He never came back. That's what Salma told him. He never tried it again with her. But she's famous now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This son of a bitch. Why isn't he dead already? Has... All you gotta do is just punch him one time in the face. He hits the ground. That's it. He's dead. How? Why has nobody done it? What the fuck's going on? As soon as we get monetized, that's where my money is gonna go to a fund. Just somebody go and punch this guy. You know, I see motherfuckers on, on, on TikTok all the time and on Twitter. They go up to old ladies and they punch them in the face and they run away. In fact, for no reason at all. I'll do it to this guy. The fuck are you punching little old Asian people for? Little motherfucker, you should be punching. Make sure he dies. He gets concussed on the way to the floor. God damn it. It's like we're living in the upside down or something. Everything's reversed. Nothing makes sense. God. This is all Joe Biden's fault. Somehow, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I don't know how to tie the ends together. But one way or another, it all leads back to that fucking son of a bitch. All of our disgusting mess that this country is in. Started when that son of a bitch took office. <sighs> Society is crumbling all around us, folks. It's crumbling all around us. And there's a brand new epidemic out on top of all this ass. The economy, the gas has been going up. I still can't afford to buy eggs and cheese. I don't have a fucking job. That pays me enough. Well, guess what? We have another epidemic. Luckily, it hasn't spread to the entire country. But it has spread in the most privileged parts of the country. And that's very dangerous, my friends. All right. And this should be concerning. Some of the A-listers are. We have an Ozempic face epidemic going on in Hollywood right now. Yes, celebrities and their doctors are prescribing this fucking injection for diabetes for motherfuckers that want to get skinny in a week. Yep, 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 yep. Jessica Simpson there. And, you know, this drug has the weirdest effect on the because yes, you lose the weight because you don't get hungry and you're giving you diabetic medicine for a person who's not diabetic. <sighs> And they take the shot. But it does this disgusting thing to their faces. Where it appears like it's it it destroys the muscle mass or tone in their face. And it's just rubbery skin attached to bone. I tell you what, man. I'm kind of jealous. I wish I had money to get some of that Ozempic. I think my cheeks are... I mean, I want, I want to look like I was 15 again. Imagine. That looks way better. I'll do it again. I'm like fucking 10 years younger. Get rid of this, these lines right here and shit. Ugh. Oh. That guy, Scott Desick or whatever, dick, dick. When he used to fuck Kourtney Kardashian, she dumped his ass because he, 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 he didn't do nothing. He just lived off her. Got her pregnant five times. She finally dumped his ass. 
Was he was trying to lose weight because he's like, oh shit, she married Travis and he's skinnier than me. Let me get skinny like him. <laughs> Motherfucker, Travis eats once a week because he's on he he his dust his sustenance is drugs. Travis Scott just sustains his body with drugs, and once a week he eats a sandwich or some shit or drinks a milkshake, and that that keeps him alive. This motherfucker wants to be Travis Scott, so he starts taking a fucking old Zampic. You dumbass! You look like a ghoul! You look like a, you're a member of the Osbournes over here! God damn it, what happened to Kelly Osborne? I miss when she was a little chubby little girl. Well, not a little girl, but when she was chubby and shit. She's my age, alright? So I'm allowed to say that shit. I had a fucking huge crush on Kelly Osborne when she was chubby and fat. I wanted, I wanted to wax that ass. Oh, yeah! Oh, but yeah, I don't know what the fuck. This is not the same little girl I grew up with. Is all I'm gonna say. Uh, Sharon kind of always looked like that, so it's like whatever. So she's skinnier now. Big deal. Her titties are still firm and plastic. That's all that matters. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know about Jessica Simpson. She looks horrible. She looks, uh, well, but she looks like Kelly Osbourne. Her lips are fucking in injected with shit. And, uh, yeah. She's wearing those fake eyelashes, too. I've thought about wearing the fake eyelashes, but they just don't look that good. I'm sorry, women. They really don't. Unless you're a stripper, you have no business wearing fake eyelashes. That's all I'm gonna say. Unless you're a stripper or a porn star, you shouldn't be wearing fake eyelashes. You whores. Ah... Ozempic face, the new epidemic of 2024. It's here, folks. Watch out. Be glad we don't have money to buy this kind of shit because people be fucking everywhere with this. I'm telling you, in a couple of months, drug dealers are going to be slanging this in the hood. Fuck lean and fuck your, 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 your Xanax and your, and, and your Vicodins. People are going to be slanging old Zampic pretty soon in the, in the hood. Just you wait, motherfuckers. I think I'm thinking of doing it. Maybe if I do if I do it for a few days, just to get a little skinny on my face, is okay. I mean, these motherfuckers do it. I don't know what the fuck. Every day. Oh, motherfuckers. <laughs> I wonder what it makes you feel like. Like, you sweat a lot. Or you just, maybe you just don't get hungry or, or something. I don't know. Ambe. Fuck old Zempic. And fuck you, celebrities. Cheers. <sighs> um, we're not done talking about ghouls in Hollywood. Because he's another ghoul, but you know what? I'll give it up to her because at least I think she's always looked this fucking scary. <laughs> I don't think she's taking old Zempic. <laughs> I think I remember 90210 and she fucking looked like this. Uh, this little girl, Tori Spelling, um, the only reason she's even fucking famous is because her father owned the network and made a show just so she could star in it and shit. And here she is, uh, fucking her 72-year-old ass trying to be fucking Gwen Stefani and shit. And everything is great when you don't give a shit. And she throws the finger like a badass. Look, bitch. You got no ass and no titties and you're pale as fuck. Please go outside and fucking get some sunlight. She's a vampire. She only comes out in the twilight or fucking uh, after dark. Look at her. She's never seen the sun in real life. She's in the shadow right there. The sun not even hitting her. Uh, we talked about it last week. She's all parading around that she's now divorced. And that even though she has five kids, those five kids did come out of five C-sections. So she still has the reproductive organs, according to her, of a 14-year-old girl. She's calling all the Democrats. Come on down. Look. No one gives a shit about your 72-year-old ass, 14-year-old pussy. All right. And if you think that that's going to get you laid, then you need to try harder, sister. And that seemed to be what everyone on the internet seemed to be fucking uh, commenting as far as what that shit went down. Well, she got the hint. She says, all right, I'm going to give you another one. Here we go. 
she starts telling the story on Instagram about when she was stuck in traffic. In LA, a standstill. And she really, really needed to pee. So she grabbed one of her son's diapers. She took her pants off and she peed. She put the diaper on and she just pissed. I don't think this bitch understands how to get laid. I mean, I mean, after fucking being married for 20 years and five kids, I don't think she knows how to hit on people. She's fucking telling stories about pissing in diapers and shit. <laughs> you dumb bitch. No one's going to want to fuck you now. You're pissing in diapers. Shit, you're... you're your son's diapers. You know goddamn well those are your diapers. You're wearing them yourself, bitch. Those are fucking old lady diapers you're wearing on. She's probably you're near incontinence. She's pissing all over herself. Whenever she laughs, she tinkles. It's shit. She, she, she doesn't want to laugh. Oh my god. Tori Spelling. God damn it. You're lucky you were born white, rich, and privileged with a lot of money. Because if not, you would have had a miserable and sad existence like the rest of us. Cheers! <sighs> Speaking of sad and miserable existence, Rebel Wilson's book came out. We all know she already trashed Sasha Baron Cohen. But this week, she has come out with the outrageous allegations. And she actually didn't mention the name, but she did go and say that a member of the royal family, and no, it's not fucking Prince Edward or Joseph, whatever that fucking redhead is, the Mary the Black Chick that lives in America and shit. No, it's not none of those motherfuckers and not that bald motherfucker with a big teeth that looks like his dad. No, it's not none of those. She specifically said, this guy, that I hung out with was probably like number five or six in line. Like five motherfuckers gotta die before he's next on the throne. So yeah, you know, he's rich, but he's no one special. No one special. All right. But she still didn't say his name. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she says or claims that this fifth, seventh in line to the throne took her to a Hollywood party. And they're called uh, Hollywood um, sec sectums parties and shit. At least that's what I what, what what she said. What they what they're what they're calling it. And uh, it says that they they charge two thousand dollars per entry into this party in Hollywood, California. And when they went in there. There's a lot of people. She goes, a big house. It looks like a huge property, you know, and there's swimming pools and there's there's literal bitches dressed as mermaids with the fins and they're swimming in the swimming pools and shit. And then all, there's women in lingerie walking around serving you shit. And she says it was like 2 a.m. And then all of a sudden the waiters were all carrying trays with tons of what looked like candy. Pink candy, just trays with candy, and everybody was just grabbing and going like that. And she was, she asked this prince from the UK, "What is that?" And he says, "Oh, that's ecstasy. That's for the orgy. That's gonna happen in forty-five minutes after it hits everybody." Oh yeah. And she says, "Oh, okay." And according to her, because back then she was fat and still a virgin. She got scared and ran away. I'm going to the bathroom. And she got the fuck out of the house and left the property and left. That's her side of the story. She says that's crazy and shit that that went down. She also claims that back then when she was chubby and fat, that a Saudi prince offered her $2 million to take her virginity because she was a virgin. <laughs> Damn, man. You know what? Damn, I, I think I would have offered her more when she was nice and thick. I don't like her right now. She's all thin. All of her good stuff is gone. <laughs> and she's not funny anymore. She was only funny when she was fat. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Uh, so she had the whole package back then. She fucked up. 
But yeah, this is a crazy story that's in her book. The Saudi prince <laughs> wanted to take her virginity off of her millions of dollars. <laughs> Going to Hollywood orgies with fucking uh, British princes and shit. Um, well, I, I did some investigating about these sectum parties. And uh, the, apparently, they are a thing. There are sectum parties. Now it's well known. They do charge about $2,000 per entry but they also charge if you're a high ender and you're gonna be coming coming a lot oh yeah then they offer a lifetime membership which cost seventy five thousand dollars and then you just give us seventy five grand and you can show up whenever you want and fucking fuck as many people as you want it doesn't matter everyone's wearing masks all right uh, some of these suppose it, <laughs> and and they, I did some research, and yes, they apparently they are members. <laughs> uh, but some of these supposed members include none other than Gwyneth Paltrow, Rod Stewart, Bill Maher, all have memberships <laughs> to this shit. Whenever they want, did you feel horny? Ah, I don't have nothing to do on a Monday night. Let me go to this weird house and get fucked by a bunch of people. <laughs> what it's like to be rich, fellas. Me and you, we gotta worry about. I gotta work a twelve-hour shift tomorrow. Fuck! I still need one hundred and fifty bucks for rent, and I haven't even paid my light bill, and I don't even have bread to make a sandwich for lunch tomorrow. These motherfuckers are fucking, well, they're fucking. <laughs> they're fucking in a big mansion with a bunch of other rich celebrities. People you don't even know, richer than you, will ever be in your whole life. Believe that. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't even be surprised if Kenan Thompson was involved in this. That son of a bitch being part of Nickelodeon and going to SNL and shit. You know goddamn well that son of a bitch is in there doing his... His, his his googly eyes getting fucked or fucking. You know, Gwyneth Paltrow surprises me. But you know what? Now that I look at her face, she does look like this kind of slutty kind of chick. You know, like she wants to get fucked anything. You could tell. Now I, 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 I go back and I play back some of those Iron Man scenes. Yeah. She's a freak, all right. Um... It's pretty crazy, man, that this 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 shit's now being exposed by Rebel Wilson. Uh, it makes you wonder uh, if she, if her career is over. You know, you don't just go around exposing the Hollywood dirt and 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 think you're gonna get away with it, bitch. Especially now you're skinny and unfunny, canceled from Hollywood. Nobody wants you in a movie anymore. Her book also is getting redacted. And the UK, because the UK has stricter laws about shit than the US, who overturns Harvey Weinstein's rape convictions. But the UK has stricter laws, and since Sasha Baron Cohen, Borat, sued the shit out of her, they told her, you can release your book in the UK, but you better take out the chapter where you talk about this skinny son of a bitch in his ass. So she's releasing the book without those chapters. She just a bunch of fucking immigrants, a bunch of Chinese motherfuckers are right now. They're tearing the first couple of pages of the first chapter. So they're just tearing the pages where she talks about Sasha Baron Cohen and all the books before they before they ship them. Uh, so who knows how that's going to turn out for her, you know, but I don't know. You don't expose Illuminati secrets, right? Without paying the piper, bitch. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, so we'll see how it happens. Hopefully, this is not the end of the story. I want to see her get bring get her bring to justice. Hey, you don't want to have sex? Well, I will fuck you then. Well, you got a rat on everybody. You fucking rat. <laughs> Cheers. I don't like rats. All right, they're full of diseases and shit. They make you want to throw up when you're eating a sandwich and you see a rat run across the room. All right, it's the worst state in the world. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> anyway, speaking of rats, Alec Baldwin <laughs> was confronted once again 
<laughs> by one of these woke ass fuck leftists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they caught him at a Starbucks trying to get his double double frappe mochaccino with a little foam on top and shit. <laughs> he was getting there in the morning, you know, getting all wired and shit with that with that with that fucking uh 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 that coffee. Well, the leftists saw him. We already know the last time that he went down to one of these Palestinian protests, you know, to support Palestine. And he got called out by Palestinians and Arabs. And they said, hey, motherfucker, you work for Hollywood. You work for the Jews. Why are you doing down here? If you're going to be down here, you better condemn Israel and condemn your Jewish masters. Do it right now in the camera. And he got all pissed and he started getting in a fight with these fucking brown people. And the white cops came and they, they escorted him the fuck out of there. Come here, Mr. Baldwin. Mr. Walt Baldwin, get out of here, Mr. Baldwin. No, 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 get out of here. And they got him the fuck out of there. Well, this time there's no police cops and this was just a regular Starbucks. So nobody was there to defend this motherfucker as he got assaulted and harassed by this pussy ass Joe Biden leftist. Let's hear it. Die. Israel, Zionism. Please say it. One time. Could you do me one Alan, can you please say free Palestine one time? Why did you kill that lady? You killed that lady and got no jail time? No jail time, Alec? I'm sorry. No jail time, Alec. You're putting innocent people in jail, Alec I'm sorry. Baldwin. I'm so sorry. Free Palestine, Alec, just one time, and I'll leave you alone. I'll leave you alone, I swear. Just say free Palestine yeah. one time. One time. One time. Call the police. One time, you know Alec. You know, you know he's a criminal. You know he's a f***ing criminal. Come on, Alec, just say... Free Palestine one time. One time, just one time, please. And I'll leave you alone. Free Palestine. F Israel, F Zionism. Please say it. One time. Could you give me one quick favor? So there at the end, he knocks the, grabs the phone, knocks it off or whatever. I don't know. There might be an investigation. He might owe her a new iPhone 15. I don't know exactly the details. He finally got pissed. She's lucky he didn't take out a gun. A bitch. <laughs> and I gotta say one thing. I want to hire this bitch. You know, I wish I had money. I would hire her for our channel. <laughs> Go over there and interview people for us. You're perfect. You're everything I want in a person. <laughs> that was crazy. Fuck Palestine. Say it one time and I'll leave you alone. Say it. Say it, I'll leave you alone, motherfucker. <laughs> She's perfect. I mean, that sounded like me. That sounded like me, except, you know, her voice was more feminine and shit. But it was just like something I would have been telling the motherfucker. <laughs> that was not a fucking badass. And dangerous at the same time. <laughs> like I said, she is lucky that motherfucker didn't pull out a gun on her ass, on their ass and shit. Um, I'm curious to see what happened. Did this... Because obviously he grabbed the phone or knocked it down or something. But I wonder what happened afterwards. <laughs> he punched her or grabbed her in a chokehold. Look, you bitch, put her to sleep. <laughs> and he left. <laughs> this son of a bitch. It's all right. She'll wake up in 20 minutes. <laughs> and he walked away. <laughs> uh, you know, this little guy, I guess said, I really like this little girl, man. I swear to God. If we ever get some money in this channel, she's hired to be our fucking reporter. To go and interview celebrities. Like, got you interviews. Go over there down the street. <laughs> Ezra Miller, Ezra Miller, why are you a criminal? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Why did you abduct that little Indian girl? Tell us right now. <laughs> you ruined the Zack Snyder universe. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's perfect. This little girl's perfect. She got everything we need for the channel. All right. That's all I'm going to say. Fuck you, Alec Baldwin, you son of a bitch. You know, why didn't you say free Palestine? It ain't that hard. Free Palestine. Hey, I did it. I'm brown. Son of a bitch. Walks around with a fucking orange tan. Thinks you're brown. You ain't brown. Son of a bitch. Anyways, we're moving on. This fucking asshole. Cheers. All right, right, right. I do want to end the celebrity ass with some fucking good news. 
some good happy news. At the same time, some kind of fucking depressing news, man, because now I fucking really, really feel old. But none other than the crush of my life growing up, Victoria Beckham, celebrated her 50th birthday, folks. 50 years old. Damn, I feel old. And all the Spice Girls went to her party. Melanie B, Scary Spice, Emma, Baby Spice, Melanie uh, C, uh, Sporty Spice, and uh, Jerry Hallowell, Ginger Spice. Oh, yeah. They were all there and shit. And they even did a fucking dance. They did the stop right now. Thank you very much. I need somebody with a human touch. Hey, you. Always on the run. Gotta slow it down, baby. Gotta have some fun. Oh, yeah. Cheers! I used to jam those cassette tapes. On my Walkman all the time. I had the Spice Girls. I'm not going to lie. I'm walking around like they would make up on fucking. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what I want. What I really, really want. Oh, yeah. Motherfuckers. <laughs> Ziga Ziga. <laughs> yeah. Dude, all their songs were sexual. All their songs. You go back and you listen to all those lyrics. Even now when I just sang. Uh, she, they're, they're, slow it down, like, bitch. Like, don't fuck me fast and come right away. Slow down. Let's have some fun. That's basically what the song is about. <laughs> Telling the guy, slow it down, bitch. <laughs> Let's enjoy this. Uh, all their songs were sexual, and they were all marketed to fucking 13-year-olds, 12, 11-year-olds. That's how old I was back in the day when this shit was happening. Uh, I went to go see the Spice Girls movie with my little cousins, and it was nothing but a bunch of kids, no, no parents. It was just a theater full of fucking kids watching these these fucking girls, bro. It was badass. We were all horny and didn't even know. <laughs> oh my god, it was it was amazing. And it th it's it's amazing to see them all together and still friends. They're like when you see groups like this, you know they hate each other or some ass, you know. But you know they they're still hanging out and shit. Uh, so cheers, Victoria Beckham. That was my crush. I that was the one I wanted. The mysterious, you know, sexy. I, I'm better than you, Gucci, motherfucker. Uh, standing back there, model and shit. That's 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 what I wanted. You know, Victoria Beckham. Uh, uh, posh spice. Oh yeah, cheers, posh. <sighs> oh, unfortunately. The main attraction or the main focus of the night was not Victoria Beckham, believe it or not. It wasn't even uh, uh, David Beckham. I think that's his name. That son of a bitch, a bagder, a fucking good looking motherfucker. God damn it. I would have given anything to be born British and a soccer star so I could have fucking fucked Victoria Beckham. It's all right. I already seen her naked. Yeah, I saw her naked when I was 13 years old, fellas. Me and a couple of friends, we got on the internet at school, in our middle school, and we found the naked pictures of her in a swimming pool, fucking tanning. <laughs> and we made print-out copies on the printer, and we gave it to our friends. We had it there in the middle school. It was badass. <laughs> the internet was fun. It always has been. <laughs> but anyways, no, none other. Then Mr. Tom Cruise stole the show. And I'm not playing. There's no video of this. Obviously, because if there was, I would be showing you. There's just stories. Epic fucking stories. That Tom Cruise, during this, pushes everyone out. Into a circle. Galway gets in the middle. And he breaks out into a full-on... Dance routine mixed with break dancing and then ends the whole routine and the song with a split right in front of David Beckham going, oh, and that Beckham was all like, fuck you, Tom, fuck you. So apparently Beckham, Beckham and Tom have always had this kind of rivalry and shit, you know, because 
I think Beckham is, feels a little inadequate next to Tom because of all his achievements. Not only that, but he does his own stunts. And he's a Scientologist. He's better than everybody. So, of course, he's going to feel inadequate. I would feel inadequate next to Tom Cruise. Fuck yeah, I would. The motherfucker is dialectic. And the motherfucker's still a star. And he knows how to read a script and do all that shit. Look at that. He probably already fucked the Spice Girls before this motherfucker even. All five of them. He, Tom Cruise probably already fucked them all. Before they even got married. You know, so he's just like, whatever, motherfucker. I'm the shit. So, yeah. Yes. Gober Kyle, I know Ginger was in Playboy. I had that issue. And I fucking, I, I, I fucking wish I still had it. But it was amazing. She wore the British flag. <laughs> it was badass. Uh, fuck you, Tom Cruise, for stealing the show from the fucking Spice Girls, you son of a bitch. Uh, I like Tom Cruise, but goddammit, this night belonged to Grow Power. Is that what original wokeness comes from, motherfuckers? We want to talk about women's rights and all that, the movement and all the women and this and that and all this ass. It would have never have been possible if it wasn't for the Spice Girls. I'll tell you like that right now. All right. Not only that, but men in general would have never stopped being racist towards women because now after the Spice Girls, I mean, you just wanted to fuck everyone. You wanted to fuck the redhead, the brunette, the blonde, and the black. All of them. Even the skinny crackhead looking one. Fuck it. Uh, so yeah, it made you have uh, a variety. You understood that, that, that beauty comes in all shapes and sizes. And shit. And ethnicities. So they are the first woke women's group. And for that, I am going to cheers to my Spice Girls. Cheers! <sighs> and cheers to record Victoria Beckham and her 50-year-old ass. Skinny ass. Skinny, beautiful ass, nonetheless. She's still my crush. To the day I die. <laughs> Alright, let's move on. We're done with the celebrity ass. And that uh, constitutes another beer. Cheers. All right, fellas. Let's move on to the weekly comic book nerd shit. Oh, yeah. And this week, I'm going to start it off with something fucking weird that happened. <clears throat> Excuse me. They released a trailer, and I'm getting sick and tired of this ass. I did say I like the Bambi. That was badass. But I'm getting sick and tired of seeing these trailers or these fucking movies. But they released a trailer to The Little Mermaid. The horror rated R shit. And they are following more of the actual, not exactly, but they're taking elements from the Hans Christian Andersen because in reality, I think the original story, she was, they, she was killer. She wanted to kill him and shit. Uh, yeah, the little mermaid was evil and shit. She's a siren and to, to turn, she wanted to eat him and shit. Um, that's what they do. And so that's what they're doing here. And the guy's called, uh, his name, first name is Prince and his last name is Eric or Edwards or Eric or some shit. The same, the same name as a cartoon and shit. So I guess she's going to be Ariel. But the people who made this movie are already promising gore. And they're promising sex and nudity. <laughs> what a way to advertise this. Look, I mean, I mean, the chick is okay. I mean, I don't, it doesn't look like she got a tits. Much of an ass either, but, you know. I don't know. I mean, there's... Whatever. Y'all seen porn better than this ass. That's all I'm gonna say. You know, it doesn't have no CGI rain, like crazy mutated reindeer zombie reindeer like we did in the, the Bambi one. The Bambi looks cool as fuck. And I definitely want to see this. Even if you show this chick naked getting fucked. 
Man, babe, I'm like, whatever. I've seen better chicks getting fucked than that, girl. That's all I'm gonna say. It doesn't interest me at all. That's all I'm gonna say. Fuck this movie. And fuck these stupid people that keep grabbing shit. Because it's coming. Because we know for a fact it is. We're gonna see a Pinocchio one. We're gonna see a fucking uh, Peter Pan one. They're gonna do... Oh, my God. This is just fucking stupid as fuck. Like... Stop! Come up with your own original fucking idea to make a horror movie. You don't need to take fucking kids movies and make the characters kill each other so you can be cool with all your fucking nerd friends and shit. You don't even do that. Fucking stupid and dumb. I'm done with his ass. <sighs> Something that happened today that I wish for the love of me that I had never have witnessed in my life. But I guess they did this because a lot of people like me were talking shit. When the director of Alien Romulus said that they used, they didn't use CGI and they wanted nothing but practical effects and shit. And I was like, fuck you, I saw the trailer, there's CGI all over that shit, face huggers and all his ass, fuck you. Well, they released this video today of the most hideous, scariest fucking remote control monstrosity. Oh my God. This is scary and disgusting and I wish I never saw this. I can't believe they made this. They, they made this fuck. I mean, uh, of course they made this. Fucking uh, B, BR2 or whatever. The little circle thing. The little ball droid from Star Wars. They made that. So, of course they made this disgusting thing. Oh, it's... I just, God damn, I just want to fucking grab a shoe and... God damn you. Ah, oh, that gives me the fucking creeps. I'm gonna, I don't I, I feel like I'm gonna have fucking dreams of this tonight. I love aliens. It's awesome. But the, the worst part of it was always the face huggers. But now knowing that this thing mechanical monstrosity actually exists is creeping me the fuck out. Oh my god. It's, it even has the ball sex, you know. <laughs> oh, this is the scariest looking thing. Uh, I have arachnophobia if you haven't noticed and some people they made that you know when they make that Halloween costume for dogs But it's a spider and the dog puts on the costume and he has these extra legs So when he's running he looks like a spy a giant spider. I hate those fucking costumes <laughs> It looks scary and disgusting This is even worse because this shit has a tail and oh my god it moves so fast too, dude uh, that's pretty insane. Um, kudos, kudos to Disney and this new studio, whatever they're going to call this studio. I know they're calling it 20th Century Pictures or some shit like that. I don't know what they're calling it because they bought Fox, so they own these properties. But this is Disney. Kudos to them because they've always been at least at the forefront of robotics. That's the truth. Uh, and they've been at the forefront of robotics for a long time. Uh, and this is just uh, an amazing feat to accomplish. Because it looks fucking real and it looks disgusting. So, cheers to this new Disney uh, subsidiary, I guess. Because it looks good. I, I'm not going to deny them that. Cheers to them. Um, but let me get the main ass, or not the main ass, but one of the asses out of the way. The Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver Review. At the moment, this was yesterday, might have changed today, or Saturday, and wherever the fuck you see this video, it might have changed already, okay? But if you're watching this live as of yesterday, Thursday, it was at 15% for the critics that hated this to the max 
I'm thinking the, the critics have hated everything Zack Snyder's ever shit out of his ass. And the audience, surprisingly, is 52%. We're not even fucking fresh. Um, let me get right into it. All right, and I'll give you my opinions. I'm not going to deny any of the actors any of their talent or their performances. That some of the characters are not fleshed out enough, even in two movies. This felt like Justice League all over again, where all of a sudden, like, you didn't even give us the movies of each individual character first. You just gave us Avengers. And then, oh, here you go. No explanations. Shit. That's, again, that's Zack Snyder's, I don't know why, that's the kind of style he does. Um, so, stuff is not fleshed out. But as far as performances and the actors and their abilities... I cannot deny them. They're good. Two of the best right here. Stands out. Sofia Botello and Ed Skarin. A screen or whatever the fuck this motherfucker. This guy's like the perfect guy to play a bad guy in every fucking movie in Hollywood. This young Cillian Murphy looking weird motherfucker. But looks like he takes all Zampic every morning and shit. <laughs> This guy is perfect for villains in Hollywood for every movie. Rapists, murderers, killers, everything. He's perfect, especially Nazis. He's perfect. This little woke ass fuck girl, Sofia Botteo. She's hot, she's sexy, she's strong. She's good, she's good. And she got that accent and shit. Reminds me like if Sama Hayek would have been casted in some of these roles when she was young with big titties. She doesn't have big titties, but I'm just saying. It reminds me of something, something similar. But back then, women weren't strong in the movies like they are nowadays. The actors are great. All the actors are great in this. Um, He's more worried about the director's cut, Gomer Kyle says. Yeah, they're going to be a director's cut, and they're going to show sex scenes with, like, fucking aliens and ass and tentacles. Yeah, he already said so. Director's cut is not going to make this a better movie. It's not. And I got to tell you, man, because there could be a movie where some of these characters could be not fleshed out. They could just be shown to you, and it could be okay. There could definitely be a movie like that. But the problem with this particular movie, in my own opinion, is that this 100% was meant to be a Star Wars movie. I 100% still, I 100% believe that. Zack Snyder had mentioned in the past that he always wanted to do Star Wars because he loves Star Wars. But Disney and Lucas and, and, and you know, they never contacted him. And so, instead, now that he got a deal with Netflix, he decided I'm going to make my own Star Wars movie. Now, this is what I think. If Zack, Zack Snyder is anything like I am, you believe in the fucking philosophy of it's better to be prepared for an opportunity and not have an opportunity than to suddenly have an opportunity and not be prepared. So if that motherfucker believes in anything like that, like I do, this motherfucker already had his Star Wars movie written, his script. And when he realized that it was never gonna happen, he went to his Star Wars script and started changing it to, to, to not be Star Wars. That's why this movie sucks. It's all over the place. There's one of the characters, another great actress, uh, this little this little Asian girl, Be Bea Don't Duna, because it's two O's. Be Be or Bo 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 Donna is her name. Awesome. She plays a character named Nemesis. It's a badass fighter. Her village it, it gets attacked by. What should what should be called the Empire? I forget what they call them. The whatever they call them, the the kings or whatever the fucking the it's basically the Empire. It's supposed to be the Empire, and they destroy everybody and kill everyone and they leave her for dead. To me, when they show her backstory, she's obviously a Jedi because she's like some kind of Buddhist or a monk or some shit like that, and they kill everyone. So they were Jedi's and they killed everyone. 
And so what she does is that she turns, if, if this was his Star Wars, she turns into a Sith, not joining the Sith, but she embraces the dark side. She chops off her arms, gets mechanical arms, and her lightsabers turn from blue to fucking red. So, right away that's showing me, oh, and she's not a Sith because she joins the Rebellion. She's just a, an angry Jedi. And, and I'm like, this motherfucker, this is a Star Wars movie. This is why this isn't any good. It's because he changed his Star Wars movie to fit something different. Um, and I'll give you more, more, more examples. There's a whole fucking lightsaber fight. There's a, an entire lightsaber fight. It's such a Star Wars movie. Between uh, the, the last two characters, which is the chick and the bad guy. They have a lightsaber fight. It's fucking crazy and ridiculous. And I'm just like, the whole time, because the ship, while they're having the lightsaber fight, the ship is crashing. And, and it's tilting as they're fighting like that. And, and it almost goes straight like that. And they start falling down. Um, It's a Star Wars movie. But it's not Star Wars and it's not Jedi. And that's why it fails. That's why the movie fucking fails is because Zack Snyder had originally written a Star Wars movie. And because he didn't get to have his dream realized, he didn't focus enough and shit. He didn't believe in it enough. He settled for Netflix and the money they gave him. And he rewrote his Star Wars movie and changed all the names and the characters and the names of the shit and the designs to make his own universe. And it doesn't work. Because this is clearly a Star Wars movie. <sighs> is it a bad movie? My final verdict. Look, this guy is good at one thing. Visuals and designs. This guy is phenomenal. These two movies are eye candy. The reason why Watchmen is a work of art, and I'm talking about the, the, the regular and the director's cut. I encourage you to watch the director's cut. It's super fucking long, but it's worth it. The reason why it's so good is because he followed the source material to the T. And... Because he didn't write it or fix it. He followed the source material. The stuff that he's good at, which is visuals and designs, shown across that movie. And that movie is a perfect work of art. And he will forever be known as the guy who made Watchmen. An incredible fucking work of art. It's a fucking beautiful fucking movie to watch. He can't do that. Unfortunately, when he writes his stories, I'm going to flat out say it. If this was a Star Wars movie, it would have been a hit. Because this could have been like Rogue One or some shit. Part one and part two. Like, it fits perfectly. It fits perfectly. Uh, there's some elements, obviously, that are not there. Like the, the, the Griffin and shit like that doesn't make sense. And the lineages because he like i'm telling you he probably went back there and rewrote his script his star wars script and changed it the, sh the shit that doesn't make any sense and there's a lot of shit that doesn't make any sense a lot a lot the little girl that killed that, that that supposedly got killed or that she shot or whatever the fuck D D dijman hansu uh, Dijman Hansu, he tells her, oh, she's still alive. And so then they're all like, oh, then part three, we're going to find her. And they all say, I, I, I'll help you find her. And they all stay together and they're going to go find that little girl and shit. And I'm just like, what? The little girl got shot. It didn't, how did she survive? Did someone, it doesn't make any sense. Not only that, but how the fuck did Titus Dijman Hansu. How the fuck does he even know she's alive? And if he would have already been in prison, 
when the fuck did she die? So it makes no fucking sense. And they never explain the little girl's powers, if she's God, or what the fuck is with, with her powers. That's what I'm saying. Like I feel like this guy, like a lot of these things that have no explanations, the explanation was the Force and the Jedis. And then the movie makes sense to me. When, as I was watching these movies, I start thinking about like the Force, Jedis, and shit, and the movie starts making sense. But with the way he fucking rewrote it, it's it, 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 bad storytelling. Beautiful visuals, beautiful designs. Like everything looks fucking phenomenal. Special effects look great. The character costumes, the fucking creatures, uh, just everything, the visuals. Uh, the cinematography. Everything's great. Everything's perfect. This guy is good at making movies. He's just not a good storyteller. Someone else write the story and give it to him. He'll knock it off the park. I promise you. He'll knock it out of the park. He's just not. He can't. He, he can't do it all on his own. Unfortunately. That is. Uh my final verdict on Zack Snyder and uh, the scar giver mm. if you want if you're high and you just want to watch shit that looks cool go watch it uh, but you know it's nothing special surprisingly it is the number one most watched movie on Netflix right now. But then again, nothing else has released on Netflix. So if you subscribe to Netflix, you're going to watch the latest shit. So, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Anyways, uh, cheers to Zack Snyder, though. I still respect him because uh, I still think uh, he is good at what he's good at. Visuals and designs cinematography is great 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 I just don't think he should be the one writing the stories uh, moving on to DC ass I think this is the only DC ass I'm gonna have for tonight but it's none other than Ezra Miller out of no out of being cancelled Came out of retirement from being canceled just to be canceled again. Because they have just announced that Hot Toys has canceled their Barry Allen, Young Barry Allen Flash 1 6 scale collectible figure with detachable heads and several attachable arms and shit for you to collect. Probably cost $300 to have this fucking. Uh, a child abductor, transsexual, fucking criminal. Yeah, yeah. Thief, drunkard, and shit. Menace to society. Hot Toys said, that's it. We don't want to be involved with criminal activity. We're canceling this shit. Is what I wish they would have said. But no, apparently they're just canceling it. Because the fans, the fans don't want to buy this ass. We don't want to buy or give this criminal any money. You're done. You're not our Flash. I'll tell you who my Flash is. Grant Gustin, you son of a bitch. He's the only Flash I'll ever know. Until James Gunn casts a new one who fucks it all up. You dumbass. But I'll tell you one thing. I'm glad they're discontinuing this and the uh, 1,500 little piece of shit action figures and heads and figurines they made. I'll tell you where they're going to end up. They're going to end up in a fucking city dump somewhere. Bunch of crows shitting all over. A bunch of little Ezra Miller, Miller faces and heads. Because <laughs> no one gives a fuck about you, Ezra Miller. You're done. Your career is done. Idiot. You ruin the Snyderverse. If anybody, anybody should be blamed for the Snyderverse's end is this transsexual criminal. Son of a bitch. 
gives all of our kind a bad name. Asshole. You should have been in jail right now. Fuck you. Gomer says that Grant Gustin was his hero when he was in the sixth grader. Grant Gustin is a shit. He should be in Hollywood making movies. He's got amazing range. That's all I'm saying. Those eyes. Get lost in those eyes. Perfect. Cheers, Grant Gustin. Fuck you, Ezra Miller. <sighs> All right, let's move on to the goddamn Marvel ass. And this week, someone on Reddit posted this image of a supposed cardboard cutout for the stand in in the movie theaters or some shit. Of the Red Hulk from Captain America Brave New World. And it looks like ass. Uh, I mean, I know Harrison Ford doesn't look good nowadays, but when you CGI him and shit into the Hulk, is this really how he's going to look? He looks retarded. And why does his hair look like, like Drake and shit when he had a fucking little fro? Oh, uh, and he's out of shape. He has a gut. Well, I guess because, you know, he's Thunderbolt Ross. I really hope this is not real. But as we've seen in the past. Like Modoc and a bunch of other disappointments. This is probably real. And I'll tell you why I think it is real. It's because when we showed the picture of Thunderbolt Ross, Harrison Ford, he had that stupid haircut. I even said, why does he have a buzz cut, weird fucking mullet looking thing? Ugh. <sighs> Here's your Red Hulk, people. An angry, fat Drake. All thick and shit. Let me try to work out and eat a bunch of protein shakes and shit. But I just don't have the genes in me. Ah, he looks like fucking Miro from AW. Rusev. God damn it. I don't even know what to say, man. Like, Marvel... It's just one disappointment after the next. Kevin Feige has spread himself out too thin. He no longer has control of anything that's going on. He obviously doesn't have any input in the designs and shit that's being done. This movie is being reshot this summer for the third time. And by the way, this movie should have been released last year. They keep pushing it back. More and more. Like Avengers. We're probably gonna, Avengers are going to come out to 2027. I'm getting like this closer to my death. And these movies are not out. But you know what? I'm fine dying. I'm fine. I'm fine. Because it's kind of shit that's going to be on screen. And I don't want to see it. I've fucking don't the MCU died with Tony Stark it's not saying that everything in phase 4 has sucked ass cause Tom Holland is gold I am just saying that it's no longer in it's prime it's done nothing they could ever do will ever bring it back to its glory days. Continuity mattered. Stories bleeding in from one movie to the next mattered. Nowadays, no. You see in the credit scenes, is it going to lead somewhere? Well, probably not. Because every movie with end of credit scenes has led nowhere. 
Where the fuck is Shang Cha? Where the fuck are the Eternals? Huh? Where the fuck is any of this other shit? You've been teasing and shit. She Hulk and Sakaar and the, the Hulk son and all this ass. Currently in the MCU, there's supposed to be a giant fucking uh, uh, celestial sticking out of the Indian Ocean, and no one's mentioned anything for the past four years about it. Yep, 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 yep. The MCU, everybody! Red Hulk! Yay! Cheers! <laughs> Followed by a... Because that's where it's at. There is one very small glimmer of hope. Because all the weight is finally being taken off the back of young Tom Holland. He doesn't have to be the only one that has to carry... This entire fucking franchise, this whole studio on his back, this poor little kid. He's worried about his skinny ass, no ass, no tit girlfriend running away and fucking Timothy Chow May or someone else. He's got other stuff to worry about. Then, oh, I'm the star of the MCU. I got to make you billions of dollars. No, no, he's, he's got other stuff he's got to be worried about. So finally, some of that weight's going to be taken off of his shoulders and it will be put on. Ryan Reynolds ass. We finally got the Deadpool Wolverine complete trailer, not a teaser. And it looks fucking sick. It's amazing. It's everything we wanted. Wolverine is saying fuck left and right. Can't show you the whole trailer. Obviously, we'll get banned, so I'm just showing you fucking little fucking shit. Um. Let's get into the spoilers, right? All the shit, because everything that we've been talking about for months is now, thanks to the trailer, being confirmed as truth. 70, no, 85% of the movie will take place in the void, which is the place where the TVA, once they prune you or zap you, you disintegrate and you end up in this fucking place. And in this place... Elias, this cloud monster, is hungry, and if he finds you, he eats you, and you are dead. 100%. Forever. But any universe that the TVA prunes, which is when they go to a timeline that shouldn't exist, and they put their little bombs on the floor, and then they leave, those bombs blow off, and the bombs prune everything. Meaning, everything gets sucked into this world. And then this monster eats everything. That is why in this world you see monuments that that the, the crazy stuff because it's from other worlds, it's from other realities. Everything's been sucked in there, and this monster is the garbage cleaner who cleans up. And obviously, he doesn't kill everyone, and a few of them are smart, and a few of them hide and band together. That's why we saw a bunch of Lokis hanging out together in the Loki show in the void. And uh, obviously there's other people in here from other worlds too, making their little gangs and their little groups. And one of the little groups is going to be consisting of X-Men from the Fox universe. And it's going to be because probably that universe gets pruned. I'm guessing. I don't know. But we're going to get stuff from the Fox universe in here. We've already seen in the fucking trailer the Fox universe... The 20th Century Fox logo in the background. So that goes to show you that the, that entire universe has already been pruned. All the movies that we've seen and all those characters, they've been pruned and they're either in here in this world or they're already dead because the cloud monster ate them. So we're only going to see a few of them, but they're going to be in here. That's already for sure a fact. And here in the trailer, they show us more. We know already that Sabretooth was in it from the leaks that we showed in the past. Sabretooth, the original Sabretooth, not uh, uh, fucking... Uh, damn it, I forget what this guy's name is. Um, uh, fuck, I already forgot his name is, what his name was. 
um whatever his name was not 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 the one from origins the original saber tooth that nobody knew who the fuck the guy was he looked like a fucking he had long hair and shit that's we already know he's gonna be in it and we know toad's gonna be in it because we also saw him in the fucking pictures the trailer shows azazel azazel from first class from that universe that's fucking cool that's Nightcrawler's dad. Well, Nightcrawler's dad bef be because he fucked Mystique. And they had Nightcrawler. Before they retconned it. Just a few years ago when the wokeness started. They retconned it. And they said that Mystique actually didn't get pregnant by Azazel. Because Mystique, because she's like fucking a shapeshifter. She somehow shapeshifted into like a dick. And put it into her own pussy. And she got herself pregnant. So Nightcrawler. Just born of a fucking. <laughs> a transsexual basically. Nightcrawler was born from a transsexual. According to Marvel Comics. From Mystique. No longer Azazel. So that would make more sense. Because he looks like Nightcrawler. He even has a tail and he teleports. But no, no, no. A transsexual gave birth to Nightcrawler in the comic book. Anyways, we also see Lady Deathstrike in this. And she's from Origins. So, we're going to have, obviously, the Fox universe has been pruned. The Origins, because I, I, I never thought any of this was connected, because none of it made sense. So, I always thought it was different universe. The Origins people will be zapped into us. And so will the first class people be zapped into us. Um... Uh, so we're getting more more obviously i think the rumors are true we are gonna see Halle berry we are gonna see fameke jensen as uh gene gray and we're gonna see james masterson cyclops in this obviously i got a feeling it's gonna be in flashbacks and i'll get back to that in a little bit or later on because i want to talk about more of this stuff they showed in the trailer not theory but we finally got a look at Cassandra Nova. Professor X. Uh, disgusting, disfigured fetus. Twin sister in the comic books. But here she's young and hot. And when she first comes out, she comes out of the skull of an uh, Hank Pym. Of an Ant-Man. You know, probably from Old Man Logan, because that's what it was in Old Man Logan in the comic books. There was a big Ant-Man. He was dead. But she comes out of the skull, and she's in a wheelchair. Charles is wheelchair. And then she stands up and starts walking out of it. So she's killed already the Fox Universe Professor Xavier. That's already a given right there. Uh, and so she's really evil. What's going to happen is in the void, in this wasteland, there's going to be teams of people because, because not everyone gets killed. Everyone's trying to hide from that monster. And so the people that get away and they hide, they have to form little groups. This chick is in charge of probably the most powerful group there. And it's a bunch of bad guys. Sabretooth is in it. Toad is in it. Lady Deathstrike. Azazel is in it. Um, I don't know who else is going to be in it. It'd be cool if the Juggernaut is in it, but that guy has already said he wasn't in it, that, that, that he didn't want to do it because he didn't want to wear the fucking costume again, that it sucked ass. Because a lot of it was prosthetics, too. He wasn't that he wasn't that big to begin with in the movie. They just made it a, a little bigger guy. But a lot of the shit was all plastic, even the muscles. It was just like a plastic suit he was wearing. He said it sucked ass, like I couldn't move and shit. And I didn't want to do that again, so I told them no. They called me. Cable... I don't think Brolin, I think Brolin was busy, so he didn't, he couldn't do it. I think that's already been established. Um, the other cameos that we're going to get besides those X-Men that I already mentioned, Cyclops, Storm, and Jean Grey, it doesn't mean it's going to be the ones from the Fox universe. It might be, I don't know. My theory is it's going to be flashbacks because there's a scene where that Wolverine says i'm not a hero kid 
Um, oh, and I'm jumping ahead. All right, well, I'm going to get to that in just a little bit. Uh, but let me move on to some other stuff that came out in the trailer. I want to go over the trailer stuff before I go over the theories. The trailer stuff. So we got Cassandra Novo. She's the, the main bad guy that they're going to be dealing with once they're pruned. Deadpool, I don't understand why the TVA recruits him. I don't. Because the trailer is really, really making it seem like they really do recruit him. But the leaks say they didn't recruit him. They're, they're, they just want to have him captive there. And he escapes. Uh, but whatever happens, he goes after the Wolverine because he wants to find a Wolverine for their team. Remember, this is what the leaks say. The leaks are not matching up with the trailer. Then again, the trailer might be switching it up to make us not think the leak is real. But the leaks say... That the TVA captures Deadpool because he's fucking around with the time machine thing from Deadpool 2. But because they can't prune him or kill him, they they just hold him kind of captive there in the TVA. And Deadpool overhears that something's happening in the universe and that they're building a multiversal team. And Deadpool says in his head, if they're going to build a team of the greatest heroes, they need a Wolverine. I'm going to go find one. And he steals one of their portals and travels from universe to universe to universe looking for Wolverines. And he wants to find the best one. Um, and so he's going to run into Daniel Radcliffe, Harry Potter as Wolverine. He's going to run into Tadger Edgerton, which I think was shown in the trailer. I think that's the Wolverine in the white suit. Everyone's saying that's Harry Potter. I'm telling you, that's probably Tadger Edgerton, the, the, the Kingsman. Um, he's going to be a Wolverine. And... Henry Cavill is going to be another Wolverine variant that Deadpool is going to approach. He's going to be wearing a trench coat. He, at the very end, this is the one that Deadpool decides this is the perfect Wolverine. And he brings him back to the TVA. That's when we see in the trailer where the TVA tells him this Wolverine let his whole universe down. You don't want him. Whatever Deadpool wants, whatever he does... The TVA chases after him and Wolverine because they escape. Because you see Deadpool fighting TVA agents and killing them. So that's them being chased. Eventually, the TVA catches both of them because they're running away. And they zap them into this wasteland. And then the rest of the entire movie will take place in the wasteland. You'll forget about the first 15 minutes. Because that's probably only 15 minutes. Everything I just said. And the rest of the movie is this. The Wasteland. Them trying to work together to get out of it. And that's what the movie is. Um, In the trailer, we see them. And everyone's talking about this. They jump through a portal. A Doctor Strange portal. Uh, and I'm, like, I'm excited for this too, Gomer. I think everyone is after they saw they saw this. But they're jumping through a Doctor Strange portal. And obviously it's not Doctor Strange that opens it. Um, but the current rumor, and probably gonna be confirmed to be true, is that it's a variant of Doctor Strange that is in the void. He's also been zapped by the TVA and he's stuck in there. And it's Agamato, the very first. Sorcerer Supreme from Avengers uh, 2000 BC. I think that's what the comic book was called. I have like two or three issues. When it first came out, I bought like the first two, three issues. Um, because it was pretty badass. Um, the Hulk was there, like an old Hulk. And, and Odin was part of this Avengers. Um, an Iron Fist. There was a woman Iron Fist in this uh, and shit. I forget, there's somebody with a Phoenix Force. I forget, Starbrand, I think, is in it. Uh, I don't know. Avengers 2000 BC is badass. I mean, it's just them fighting in, in ancient times or whatever. Uh, but that Doctor Strange or this Sorcerer Supreme Agamato, we're going to fucking see in this fucking movie. And he's going to open a portal for them to jump in. And everyone's saying, oh, they're jumping into the MCU. No. I think that if Agamotto, because if you look at the background, that is the wasteland. That is the wasteland. If Agamotto is stuck in the fucking 
void, that means he can't get out of it too. Because if he was in the void, then he could have opened a portal and got out of it to go to another universe. But if he's stuck there, then he can't get out of it too. This is just a portal to transport you within the void somewhere else. So they're probably just like, fine, take us to wherever the bad guys are. And they're just jumping through it to go to where the bad guys are. But I don't think they're jumping to the MCU. Not yet. I think that's, that's later. That's at the end of the movie. But I don't think this is the end of the movie. I really think this is like in the middle. It's just to teleport. Teleport us to there. That's all they're doing. And probably Agamotto's going to die. And before he dies, I'll open the portal, go to her, kill her, go to Cassandra Nova. And that's, what, that's what's happening here. That's just what I think. Um, here's where we're going to get into uh, more rumors and spoilers. But we had already said that two of the cameos that are going to come out is we are going to see the little girl, uh, X-23, Laura Kinney. And uh, and Gambit, uh, this fucking guy, uh, Channing Tatum, shit, ripped as fuck, sexy as fuck, being Gambit. Um, and the other rumor was that we were going to see Electra as well. Uh, Jennifer Gardner. Now, these are all people from a Fox universe or from different universes or variants that were all zapped and sent into the void. And so now they're stuck there and they're all part of a resistance, a group and shit. And so when they're in the void, Logan and Deadpool, when they meet the bad guys, they're going to meet the bad guys first and they're going to get into a fight. They're going to kill Sabretooth and Toad. And then Cassandra Novo obviously is going to beat the shit out of them. But somehow they'll escape and run away. And when they run away, they're going to learn to fight together and be friends. And they're going to meet the other Deadpools that we've already seen, like I've shown you the pictures already from the t-shirts, there's a bunch of other weird looking Deadpools, a little kid, a baby, a flying head, and a stupid little disgusting little dog. And so there's going to meet a bunch of Deadpools that they're, come join us, we'll form a new Avengers team. But they're going to meet these people too. They're going to meet this little girl, they're going to meet Gambit, Chan and Tatum, and they're going to meet Elektra. And they're all probably going to tell their stories of their universes. And you'll see flashbacks with probably more cameos within the flashback, like 30 second cameos. But we're going to get cameos of that their universes. And they're, they're going to say why Dare, Daredevil's not there. He got killed. Or why, where do you come from? And this and that. That's why there's a scene where Logan is in front of a fire and he's crying and he's saying, I'm no hero, kid. Because he's talking to this little girl after they're all formed as a team. Because as a team together, all the crazy looking Deadpools and these three people are all going to attack the bad guys in the void. That's what I'm piecing together and from, from all the spoilers they're putting out. This is sounding to be like a badass fucking movie that's going to be eye candy. Um, Fameke Jean Grey, James Marston Cyclops, and Halle Berry Storm, I think, will be flashbacks when they're sitting around the campfire and Logan tells what happened in his universe. And there'll be flashbacks of them dying, of Cyclops dying, Jean Grey, and Storm. And something tells me, because Logan from that universe has the yellow suit and the mask. They haven't shown us the mask, but he's going to have the mask. We've shown it already, all the pictures. He's going to have the mask. They're going to have their classic X-Men suits in the flashback. Cyclops is going to look like the blue with the yellow. and the. It's going to look like the fucking X-Men 97. But we're going to see... James Marston, Jean, uh, Femeca Jensen, and Halle Berry wearing those costumes from the X-Men 97. But it's not 97. It's that Logan's universe. And it's going to be flashbacks from his universe. And he's going to tell why he's not a hero and why he let his universe down. That's my theory. And I think it's lining up with a lot of the leaks and the, the shit we've been seeing and shit. Uh... 
what's her name? Uh, Taylor Swift is going to be another Deadpool variant. Le Lady Deadpool. Probably going to get killed right away. We're going to see a lot more Deadpool variants. There's another Deadpool variant of Ryan Reynolds where he doesn't even look like he has cancer. He looks perfectly fine and he has long hair. And he has his hair straight up like Omega Red. Um, They're pulling all the stops on this movie and it's sounding great. And I'll tell you why this movie 100% is going to kick ass. Is because somebody on Twitter pointed out they got the same choreographer for the fights as they did in the original Raimi trilogy. Already, the original Spider-Man movies are the shit and top quality. And if they got the same people, <laughs> look at this. It's like, <laughs> it's movement for movement. Like, uh, this is Hollywood, how cheap they're getting. They're like, let me just reuse the same fight scene from the movie from 10 years ago, 20 years ago. No one's going to remember. <laughs> well, this nerd from Twitter found it. <laughs> Multiverso Marvel. He figured it out, you this fucking Peruvian son of a bitch. He has nothing better to do than to watch all these movies and say, hey, that's the same routine they did in that movie from 25 years ago. And shit. Cheers. To Raimi and his Spider-Man movies, by the way. It's identical. Identical. They didn't fire this choreograph and getting you guys. Somebody fresh. This motherfucker been watching a bunch of old movies and saying, nah, just do this. It'll look cool. Yeah, because you already saw it in the movie, you pussy. Son of a bitch. <laughs> um, we did get sort of spoilers. And I'll explain why. But no, no, big ass. Can we get some toast? Who we get most of our leaks from, by the way. This fucking, this bitch. He must be sucking some dick down there at Marvel. And shit. Uh, but she, we've been getting all the spoilers from him. Or her. Or whatever. Or they. But they put... Oh my god, this is too good. I'm not gonna ruin this. But the post credit scene in Deadpool and Wolverine is so fucking mind-blowing. I can't even believe they were able to pull this off without anyone knowing. And out of nowhere, to not only to confirm, but solidify whatever this whore is saying on Twitter. None other than Deadpool creator himself, Rob Lightfield, commented on this post and said, He's ain't lying to you. It's they, you dumbass. If you don't know what their pronouns are, it's they. Idiot. But he said, They ain't lying to you. So, this post credit scene is so amazing and mind-blowing that both of these people can't believe they were able to shoot this scene without anyone finding out what was in it. You idiots! I think it's pretty obvious what this end of credit scene is. Because we've already been seeing all the spoilers and all the rumors and everything that the trailer has been confirming. We know goddamn well what this end of credit scene is without you even fucking saying it. Just with this statement confirms that the end of credit scene is none other than Mr. Toby Maguire. The end the credit scenes, we will see Deadpool and Wolverine join toby mcguire from the mcguire universe to start forming the multiversal team that will fucking fight in secret wars and the reason why can we get some toe says i can't believe they were able to film this without anyone finding out is because toby mcguire drove down there and fucking no one well no one has said it I'm telling you, this is what it, there's no confirmation in my theory. This is what it's going to be. Wolverine and Deadpool, wherever they end up at the end in another universe, they're going to end up with Tobey Maguire. And they're going to say, there's some shit going down and we need you on the team. We need you. 
the first Spider-Man. The best one. Most wholesome one. Lovable one. Innocent one. We love you. Just a theory. But I think that's what it is. That's just me. Um, We shall see. We shall see. But right now, I will say that Deadpool is looking out to be probably Marvel's big cash cow. Mm -hmm. But let me finish the comic book ass this week. Uh, by the way, next week, because I just downloaded it today, six episodes, which I got to watch during the week. We will be reviewing the Knuckles series. Uh, we'll have to wait for the review for that next week. Uh, but I will say this. Um, let's move on to the final ass of this week. And it's none other than X Men ninety seven, episode seven. All right, and that's all I'm gonna say. It's all right. I mean, I'll go through it. The main thing is, I mean, I'm glad they at least followed the comic books, and that I was I had guessed right. Um, but let me start off with how it happened. I mean, they're burying, they're burying Gambit or the funeral, but Rogue is missing and she's out there fucking shit up with the army. And she actually goes and they actually have General Thunderbolt Ross. And, uh, and it even says General, this thing, General Thunderbolt Ross, you'll see in a little bit. Um, but he's there. And so it's like, oh, well, at least now they're saying these characters do exist in the X-Men 97 because the general Thunderbolt Ross never came out in the original one, but now he's here. And I'm like, all right, it's a connected universe now. And so she wants to know where fucking uh, Henry Gyrick is and shit. And Henry Gyrick is like, you know, kind of like El Chapo or one of these fucking rich motherfuckers, or, uh, Harvey Weinstein. They're in a jail, but it's a house somewhere and by himself and shit, all living, living good. Rogue goes over there to fuck him up, but tells him where Trask is. And so Rogue they, they takes off to go find where Trask is. But where they go find him, she runs into Captain America. And Captain America, out of nowhere, is there. And it confuses me because it's like, I, I got excited that he's there. But... It confused me because I was just like, in X-Men 94 continuity, the only time Captain America ever came out was in a flashback when Wolverine was talking about in the back in the war days and that Captain America sacrificed himself to stop a, a nuclear bomb and he disappeared. Obviously he fell into Arctic or whatever the fuck. But they never mentioned anything about him being found or anything like that. But he's here. So I guess we're just supposed to assume, you know, that he was found in the Arctic and all that shit. But it just pisses me off. They don't explain. They don't explain. They don't, they don't explain. It kind of angers me. But Captain America kind of tells her where Gyrick is and they're going to find him. But he said, we got to do this by the book. We got to go talk to S.H.I.E.L.D. and the police and shit. And Rogue gets all mad and like, you fucking piece of you boy scout. And he says, well, fuck you. You want your shield? Go fetch it. And she takes it away from him and she fucking flings it the fuck away. Like, fuck you. And she leaves. You, you, you pussy. Pretty much what she says. And she, she fucking flies away. And the Captain America is like, well, God damn it. Uh, and that's all. He was just there to get humiliated by Rogue, which is badass because I think Rogue is badass. It still pisses me off. There, this lady's 80 years old voicing this. 
I, I, I respect her for being the original fucking voice of Rogue, but god damn it, you should have hired a young actress that sounded like the original fucking, fucking character. It sounds like an 80-year-old voice is coming out of this young, hot-looking character. No tits, by the way. They took away her tits. It pisses, it's still pissing me off. And her ass, her big ass, they took it away, too. It's not, it's not on there. I looked for it. I paused it. It's not there. Uh, but anyways, they go, and they go to find Trask. And when they get there, they find, like, he's got all this, like, lab. And, like, he's making all these weird, like, cyborgs and half sentinels. And when they find Trask, he's ready to commit suicide and jump off a ledge and shit, saying about, like, I'm Oppenheimer. And I made the bomb, and I'm gonna destroy. I, I wanted to destroy you mutants, but I fucked up, and now I'm I've doomed us all. We're all gonna die, so I'm gonna die. And before he jumps, the rogue flies over there and catches him before he fucking falls and dies and shit. And uh, and then she starts the reasoning with him and the X Men and talking about like what's the master plan. And Sinister and who is behind this. And when he tells her, like, oh, it's Sinister and he did this. And Rogue said, all right, now that we know the truth, fuck you. You do deserve to die. And she lets him go. And he falls to his death. Yeah. I freaked out because I was like, oh, she's going to fly down there and grab him before he dies. But no, he died. He fell and died. And Rogue's there all pissed. And all the X-Men freak out. Except for Wolverine, who says, Good, that son of a bitch deserved it, bub. What do you mean you fucking start doing it? And Beast, who Beast was already, like, kind of changing his mind, like, fuck humans, like, they... Because he told that reporter, like, fuck you, like, you fucking used us and shit, you don't give a fuck. Like, this is just another news story. You don't give a shit that people died. That he, mutants died. And so Beast is already feeling the same way against humans. And Cyclops has already fucking turned also on, on the humans. He said, your only reason you're alive is because they're good mutants like me. If not, you all be dead, you sons of ungrateful bitches. And so the X-Men are already turning on Xavier's philosophy and are more turning towards Magneto's philosophy about pro-mutants, fuck the humans. During this morph, says... Because he sees that Wolverine's agreeing and Beast is agreeing to her killing him. Morph says, is this what we are now? We're killers and shit. And Rogue's all like, he deserved to die and all this shit. He killed Remy. But then all of a sudden, the corpse of Trask, zombified, comes alive. And he's a sentinel. <laughs> yeah. Right away, I knew. I was like, yes, it's not sinister. It's not, it's this fucking cyborg that I've been telling you all about. It's not sinister. But anyways, Trask completely takes out all the X-Men easily because he's now a cyborg sentinel. He takes them all out and he's about to kill them all. And then Cable shows up from the future and he saves the day. He fucking throws some kind of grenade or something and fucks this guy up and Cable shows up. Da -da -da, he's there to save the day. Uh, yeah. So, fucking, at the very end, Cable, I guess, fucking lets Scott, or Scott realizes that it is his son. And, uh, and he's there, and he tells them, Sinister is not the bad guy. It's someone else, and he's a lot worse. And we need to stop him before he does what he's going to do. Because he's already fucked up Genosha, and he's going to do worse. So, uh, here is the villain, Bastion. I, I had forgotten his name, and I had to go look for fucking... Well, they finally said his name here, so I didn't actually go look through my comic books. But I have one comic book with his assholes in it. Um, but Bastion is the bad guy. And he is not human. He is also a sentinel, and he's from the future. And so this is a weird origin where I'm going to go. I don't know how much of the original origin they're going to take from this. I do not. Um, I do not know how much of the original origin they're going to take. But in the original fucking origin, this guy or 
Nimrod. You guys know who Nimrod is. Is that sentinel that Bishop had fought in the past and in the future. But Nimrod comes back to the past, chasing after Cable and Bishop. And when Nimrod gets to the past, he finds the destroyed Master Mold that the X-Men already defeated. And Nimrod looks at the past and sees everything that's happening. And Nimrod decides to fuse with Master Mold. And so, so what happens there is that once he fuses with Master Board, he becomes this guy, which is Bastion. So Bastion is basically Nimrod and Master Mold fused together. So he's not human, even though he looks human. And they made him look really, really human, except for the fact that in that one scene when he's talking to Sinister, he has some kind of, like like me, he has some kind of sh shit connected to him in the back of his head, some kind of wire and shit. Uh, so they, they did show that, that though well, he's not human a little bit. Um, but in the comic books, this is what he looks like. This is what, uh, they should have gotten more to a look like this, but he looks more like a cyborg. He looks more, to me, he always reminded me of Cable and the way Cable looked and shit. Uh, that's the way he always reminded me. Uh, but Bastion is basically just Master Mode, like I said. Uh, Master Mode and a combination of, of, of Master Mode and fucking... Um, uh, 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 I'm fucking high and drunk. Master Mode and Nimrod is what, what he is. A combination of both of them. And shit. Um, and he is the one who creates the Prime Sentinels which is the Sentinels that are basically like him. They can adapt, uh, or basically Nimrod, which is so weird because when you think about it, it's like Nimrod created himself. He made the Prime Sentinels and shit, so like he created himself. Um, it's like a, like a never-ending loop. It's the way I always saw it in the comic books. Um, but we see that he is the guy behind it. He is the guy behind it. And that he has Magneto. Magneto's not dead. And he's shaving Magneto. At the end, he's shaving him clean. And he has him there. And so that leads everyone to believe that he's going to turn Magneto into some kind of sentinel or half cyborg or something and control him. That's the most obvious thing that comes to mind. When I see that shit. I don't know how this happened. But some nerd. On the fucking internet. Got online. And came up with a theory. And everyone is rolling with it. Some nerd came out and said. That Bastion is going to turn. Magneto. Into Onslaught. Fuck you. Whoever fucking piece of shit nerd came up with this. I have some Onslaught comic books from back in the day when he was first popping out. And even though I could, like back in the day I was a kid, so my mom wouldn't always, when we would go to Walmart or the stores or whatever, she wouldn't always buy me the comic book I wanted because they had no money. Shit. But while she was shopping, I would read the comic books there, you know, and put it back. Every once in a while, she said, you can get one today. And I would grab one. So I have an issue or two there where they talk about him or some shit happens with him. I actually have the one where they find out that Charles is Onslaught. I have that one. Uh, but Onslaught, they're saying that, oh, Bastion is going to turn Magneto into Onslaught. Fuck you. And fuck you, X-Men 97 and Bebe Bo De Mayo, if that's really what they do. If that's really what they do, fuck you. Fuck you right now. Son of a bitch. I hope it's not. And let me explain to you why I think it's not. I don't think Magneto's going to get turned into Onslaught. And, and Magneto's probably going to turn into a... He's just going to be controlled. He's going to be a drone, a cyborg that that guy's going to control and, fight, and use to fight the X-Men. And shit. But... Here is Onslaught's origin from the comic books and why it could not be fucking uh, Magneto. Let me explain to you. 
the way onslaught was created was that magneto in one of the fights against the x-men he was fighting wolverine and he pulled with his powers he pulled the adam adamantian out through the pores through out of the pores of adam of wolverine's skin out of the bones he pulled it every all the adamantian he pulled it out everything was coming out of every pore all the adamantian came out like liquid and so when that happened wolverine because he didn't have adamantian anymore suddenly turned into this beast creature and they called him uh feral i i forget it was a feral wolverine or a berserker i forget what it was but he bit he literally looked just like wolverine but like beast you know he had bigger arms and he big legs and he walked like like a fucking caveman and he his 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 facial features look more like a fucking cat like a beast but he was still white and pale and had bone claws and now he had bone claws because he didn't have adamantian anymore and he would wear like a bandana like a ninja turtle like a bandana but he would put it over his eyes and they would cut the holes in his eyes but it was a bandana that he was wearing um, and that happened to Wolverine. When when Magneto did that to Wolverine, Professor X got so pissed that he went after Magneto and he fucking went into his mind and decided to t Berserker, thank you very much, Goku. It was uh Go Gomer, Gomer Kyle. Berserker Wolverine. I forget it was Fear Wolverine or Berserker. It was something like that. Uh but anyways, Professor Xavier uh, went to Magneto, attacked him. And he went into his mind and he decided to just stop him for once and for all. Enough of this fighting, enough of this asshole being a dick. And he took away like the bad stuff, like pretty much the evilness. He took it away from his from his head and he locked it away in his head. Boom. He blocked it. And so Magneto became docile and he didn't remember anything. And he took the name of Joseph. He had long hair. And he went to go live in a farm and help a community. He was no longer Magneto and wasn't evil anymore. And Charles did that. Unfortunately, what Charles didn't understand was when he did that, he took that bad side of Magneto into himself without even realizing. He thought he just locked it away, but he actually absorbed it. When he absorbed it, that bad side subconsciously was inside of charles and was building a persona and that's onslaught and it's pretty much all of the evil of magneto but once all the evil of magneto was inside of charles it found all the evil of charles because charles still has bad you know he's human so charles has bad thoughts and bad feelings but because he's a good person he's able to say fuck you uh that's not i don't like those thoughts i don't like those feelings this is what's right and this is what must be done even though he's human, he has those thoughts and feelings. This persona took also the bad side of Charles and created Onslaught. So Onslaught is basically Charles Xavier as Magneto, really fucking powerful. A, a very powerful telepath that believes in mutants and fuck humankind. That's what Onslaught was. And that arc took forever to end. And it involved the Fantastic Four and all the Avengers and the entire Marvel uh, 616 comic universe in order to stop this asshole. Um, and it was just Charles. It was just Charles. And at the end, everything got recreated. All the X-Men got recreated again and gave in new lives and new memories. It was just, it was basically a restart to the X-Men. This was a reboot to the X-Men by the time it ended. That's what they did in the comic books. Um, it's not Onslaught. Uh, fucking Magneto is not going to turn into Onslaught because... There's no way in hell he could be Onslaught. There's no way in hell he could be Onslaught. Because it would it, it doesn't make any sense to the story. Uh, so yeah. Bastion is the bad guy. He's just a, a sentinel from the future in the past. Who's coming up with a new plan to make sure the mutants die or whatever. Um, the next three episodes are probably going to be the best. This one was just it was just a reveal of the real villain. I don't think this was the best one. The best one was number five. The one where they killed the Genosha. That was the best one. Everything else has been ass to me. Everything else has been ass. 
Um, this one was okay. It was just a reveal of what I already need. I was like, that's probably what they're going to do. They're going to follow the comic books. It's going to be that. And I'm glad they did. Uh, the little, some things are changed, obviously. But, uh, yeah, this is what's happening. I don't know how, but in some way or another, at the very end of the, of the season one, Apocalypse will be revealed as well to be somehow in line with this. Um, Mr. Sinister and I just, I really wanted them to do more of the Age of Apocalypse because there's more stuff. There's like, there's another clone that Sinister makes and it's X-Man, which is Nate Summers. And it's another guy from the Age of Apocalypse. Uh, and then there's the evil beast from the Age of Apocalypse also. Like, that's also from from another timeline that's now in this one. That during during the onslaught was happening, there, Hank McCoy was replaced by another beast from another timeline. An evil one. Uh, uh, so much stuff that they could incorporate. But for now, I'm happy with the minimal stuff they're including. And it's not oversaturated. Because the X-Men's are, the storylines are really convoluted and very complicated. Um, the next three episodes are going to be amazing, I'm telling you. They are going to be amazing. They're going to be uh, one part one, two, and three. And I think they're going to... Magneto will probably come back as an android. But I think the X, he's not going to reveal to be an android. The X-Men are not going to know... And because they're already turning on humans with this mentality about well, what fuck him and good kill him, they're gonna join Magneto, I think, and and there's gonna be a rift between the X Men, where now we're gonna have Cyclops, Beast, Wolverine, Rogue, and Magneto on one side saying fuck the humans, and then the other X Men are gonna be like, no, that's not what Charles said. And then Charles arrives. That's just my guess. Charles arrives. And so now we have two groups of X-Men fighting each other. I think that's what they're doing here. Plus Bastion's story about him creating the Prime Sentinels. The Prime Sentinels are basically humans that get turned into cyborgs. Like after they die, like the way they did, like I don't, he injects them with something or some virus and it turns them in. You know, they're no longer human. They'll be robots or cyborgs and shit. And those are more adapted towards mutants. They can adapt during a fight. And, and, and that's why Trask took all, all, all the X-Men. Um, yeah. So that was this episode. That's basically what I'm saying. That's my knowledge of the subject. This episode was all right, like I said. So far, I will say that I've out of the seven episodes, I've liked two. I've liked this one, even though this one was not amazing. I've liked it. It's passable. And they confirmed what I thought. I, I couldn't remember this guy's name, but I knew because I saw seen him in the comic books. Like I said, that's the way I seen him in the comic books. He looks just like fucking... I always thought he looked like Cable. And in the comic book I have, he's fighting Cable. So I thought he was a Cable villain because he's from the future. Um, But yeah, he's just a combination, uh, a merger of, of Nimrod and Master Mold from the future. Um, so yeah. We're gonna, they're going to take this into uncharted territories and there's going to be more cameos from other shows. Like, Rumor is we're going to see Spider-Man 1994 in this too. Oh well, they got to bring it. Well, we kind of saw him in the original one towards the end when they were fighting the time the time bandits or when, when they were fighting Apocalypse and the last time they fought him that they trapped him in the time prison. Um, we saw a glimpse of a hand of Spider-Man shooting a web in New York. When they were showing destruction all across the world. So that was kind of a cameo. So we'll see what they do with that. Um, Storm will probably join them in the next episode. All hells is going to break loose in the next episode. It's called Tolerance is Extinction. So this is basically a, a, a representation of like the trans movement being the X-Men versus the humans being the rest of us. Uh, and we're about to see it play out here in X-Men 97. Cheers! <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys like these fucking animated sprites. That Rogue One is hot as fuck. And Cable, 
Man, I always liked the way they like they made Cable look there in that fucking fighting game and shit. I miss those fighting games. They really ruined it with the new graphics and and, and it sucks ass. Nobody even bought that shit. It was it was a failure of a of a video game, whatever it was called. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyways, I'm done talking fucking ass and Marvel and shit and for the week and ranting. I'm going to have a hell of a week. Uh, I'll be uh, probably out of town, but I'll still be back for the podcast next week. I thought Backlash was this Saturday, but since it's not, then I guess we will probably see it next Saturday when I'm in town. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I might need to work. I don't know. It d- depends. I, I'm still, it's still up in the air. I'm debating. Uh, I made a little extra money this week and the last week. Maybe I won't work next week or maybe i will i don't know i don't know i don't know we'll see money is tempting the materialistic world you know it's tempting it's tempting so i have ranted enough but i will leave you with some life advice all right materialistic world is very very tempting and all the riches in the world are 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 great and and, 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 and all these these lustful things and shit but at the end of the day, none of those things are going to make you happy, ever. And even after you have those things, you will still feel empty as when you did not have those things. I promise you, they're Not me. I want those things because I know that's the only thing that's going to make me fucking happy in life. Riches, fame, and fortune, bitches, the drugs, sex and alcohol. All life has to offer. Strength. I want it all. But anyways, you don't. Don't. You don't want it. It's bad for you. And at the end of the day, it doesn't fulfill you or your soul. All right? Let go of the ego. Look for the other thing. Remember, you have bills right now. And, and you're you're struggling paying for rent, buying food and gas and all that you get. A rich man in America still has the same problems you do except with a lot more money but they still have to pay taxes they still gotta pay gas for their gas guzzlers and their trophy wives and their 70 kids with all their child supports and all that shit it's just more money B.I.G. the notorious B.I.G. was right the more money you have the more problems you're gonna have it doesn't matter you can be poor or rich you're still gonna have problems so be happy and don't focus in this material world because there's other things that matter like friends and family and we and beer cheers see you next week walk back what the fuck man fucking running like lady eh? <laughs>